Hey guys, <clears throat> this is a short slideshow video just showing the stages of restoration of my 1957 comma TS3 supercharged two-stroke diesel engine. Some of you have probably already seen this engine running on my channel and I uh, just wanted to, to show people that's not exactly how it looked when it first came into my workshop. The picture on your screen now is how the TS3 looked when it first arrived in my workshop. I literally pulled that engine out from under a rail car in a scrapyard where it, where it sat for the last 30 years exposed to the weather. Since restoring a comma minibus uh, about 10 years ago, I've always been interested in comma vehicles and uh, wanted to restore one of these engines and um, bring it back to life to have it as a, as a static display as part of my comma sort of memorabilia. The engine was in really bad shape. It was missing many components including two pistons and uh, everything was covered in rust. After pulling the engine down, removing all the muck, oil and rust, I set about finding all the missing parts. The engine was really dirty and it took a lot of degreaser and scrubbing to, um, to get all the muck out of it. I honed the bores and repainted the block, ready for reassembly of the pistons when I could find them. As you can see, the entire timing gear was missing. Parts for these motors are, haven't been available in eons, so um, it was a case of back to the scrapyard to scrounge up parts. In two different vintage truck scrapyards, I was able to find uh, the timing gears literally just laying in the dirt in piles of rusted comma trucks. And I was able to purchase new, a, a four foot length of um, triplex um, timing chain from my local agricultural shop. So that was a bonus. All the timing gears were very rusty and quite a few hours were spent on the wire wheel to bring them back up to serviceable. The aluminium timing cover is quite large and pretty fragile. It was hard to find one which wasn't cracked or broken. But eventually I did find one in a pile of scrap motor pieces and uh, just long forgotten at the far end of the scrapyard. All of the gaskets had to be made. Making gaskets is something I seem to be getting better at because I'm often working on machines where parts are no longer available. When I eventually found a flywheel, its ring gear was badly rusted. So another flywheel was found in a, in a different scrapyard. Um, but it didn't fit my engine. But I was able to remove the ring gear and fit that onto my flywheel. So many of the parts in these engines are interchangeable. I was beginning to make progress, but I still had no pistons. I found some that were in a really bad way and had to soak them in evapo rust for a week before attempting to free up the rings. Although some parts may be found for the newer 214 engines, parts for this old 199 
are virtually impossible to find. So I needed to reuse the rings on the pistons and uh, I really wanted to get them out without breaking them. Many of them were stuck, uh, the wrist pins were seized, they were, they were a real mess and as much as I didn't want to use them, I had no choice. Eventually, after lots of soaking and gentle scraping and cleaning, I was able to build two pistons from my pile of bits and pieces that would be serviceable and uh, suit my needs. I was lucky with the supercharger. After initially seeming seized, it, um, it freed up and uh, appeared to be in pretty good condition. I was unable to find an inlet manifold uh, to suit this engine, so I had to, um, had to use an older one which I found. The problem here was it never had the butterfly throttle control that the uh, earlier models had, so I had to make the plate that the uh, throttle butterfly bolts to. Other than that, it seemed to work fine. After a failed starting attempt, I soon found that the fuel pump was gummed up tight and had a broken control uh, rod where it connects onto the to the rack that, that turns the plane heat. Um, not knowing much about these pumps, I pulled it down and cleaned it up to see what was going on. I found this particular pump to be extremely simple and easy to repair and was able to, um, to clean it up, put it back together and get it working with only having to make a few new gaskets and a pin to hold that control rod. An air filter unit was found on the remains of a chassis of the Comet truck and although rusty it cleaned up okay and uh, that completed the build. In case you're wondering, the starter motor is a Perkins anti-clockwise starter that fits these engines fine. The part number for that starter motor is CES9110ND. It's a good replacement for the original Lucas starter.